What's up, my people? It's your girl. Please move closer. Let us discuss. Let us start with the main cocoa of the week. Ladies and gentlemen, meet my Cameroonian mother, Dr. Stella Emmanuel, who broke the internet on Monday when she joined the frontline doctors to say that hydroxychloroquine plus zinc and Zithromax cure COVID-19. The internet exploded. As ah, Obanoje, my mother, you know how to break the internet. Millions of views overnight. And that is when I actually started praying for her because I just knew what would happen. <laughs> You know, by the time I woke up the next morning, man, her name was everywhere. Dr. Stella Emmanuel. People digging into her record, into her religious beliefs. Eh, my mother, you know, too well. In fact, I wrote on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram asking to hear what people have to say about her video. And it's just overwhelming to see people's responses. Of course, people want to know what I think about it. So let me put on my glasses. <laughs> It's going to be very interesting okay um sorry i cannot see anything first of all i believe that presentation matters a lot like for real people look at not just what you present but the way you present it you know someone said that um given the choice between being right and being kind choose kind you know that there's a way to present an argument without calling other doctors fake doctors or you know in case you're watching dr costella the woman has a point i mean she's not the first doctor to say that hydroxychloroquine can help some patients you know <laughs> but she presented her findings as if some doctors are happy watching their patients die there's no need saying things like fake doctors fake science you know all she needed to say was i tried it it worked for my patients this is the evidence and you can see the pattern please make it readily available for doctors to prescribe you know what i mean i'm i'm just concerned that she generalized it as the cure for every single person regardless of their underlying health conditions you get what i'm saying she said that she treated people with diabetes people with high blood pressure people with asthma with the same prescription but the truth is people react to medications differently as far as i know they've been giving people hydroxychloroquine in america now for months especially in new york they are using it to treat COVID-19 patients, but some people are still dying despite being given hydroxychloroquine. They are, they are giving it to people. It's not as if they are not giving it to people. Also, Nigerians are very familiar with chloroquine. I mean, we all grew up on chloroquine. <laughs> I spoke to a Nigerian doctor and he told me that since the outbreak, they've also been giving hydroxychloroquine to COVID-19 patients in Nigeria as well, but it doesn't work for everybody. I mean, you cannot tell me that they didn't try their best to save Abakari's life. That's the chief of staff, as well as former government governor and senator Ajumabi and popular radio presenter Dan Foster among many people they probably gave them hydroxychloroquine as well yet they died we have at least 800 official deaths in Nigeria due to COVID-19 you can't tell me that they didn't try the hydroxychloroquine in Nigeria as well I'm not saying that she has a point that hydroxychloroquine helps a lot of people but you cannot generalize because everybody has different underlying medical conditions but you know all she needed to do was present her own experience with evidence i mean everyone is still looking for a cure and all she needed to do was say i cured 350 people of covid 19 or, or is it 250 people because she treated 250 on july 17th and now she says 350 whichever one it is as a doctor she must have a record and she should present this as evidence she doesn't need to go by their full names she can just use initials you know include their age the underlying health conditions of each patient uh, if there is any and then the dosage that she administered to each patient and then have other doctors review this because it only adds to your credibility when you have other doctors review it and publish her findings instead she made a video after her first video that went viral she now made a video asking her patients to come out asking them to make videos so that people would know it's real listen our patients you need to start speaking up we put our lives we put our families we put our licenses on the line to treat you you need to speak up make a short video hashtag HCQ works. Let's hear your hydroxychloroquine story. What? A lot of people don't necessarily want others to know that they had COVID-19. As a doctor, she must have a record. Also, Dr. Stella said that she's a pediatrician. You know, a pediatrician treats kids. She got her license in November. So she's licensed to treat only kids, nobody above the age of 18. Yet, in her video, she mentioned treating elderly people, people in their 90s. It would have been helpful if she would mention how she went from being a pediatrician to a family care facility 
physician and how she also became a geriatrician that is somebody that treats elderly people with license in america just to add to her credibility and i'm not disputing that she can treat adults please listen carefully but in america you're supposed to have a license for whatever age you're treating so it's kind of confusing when she says she's a pediatrician but she's mentioning treating elderly people so this is confusing because kids normally have better immunity than adults they get a lot of immunization so kids have better immunity than adults so is she basing the conclusion on the fact that she treated kids because the virus has not been killing children as much as it's been killing adults me i don't have anything against you saying that hydroxychloroquine works i just think that your presentation you know presentation matters a lot now the one that got me <laughs> has been her responses to her video going viral <laughs> first of all you know facebook took down her video they said because of misinformation they are afraid of people running to get hydroxychloroquine regardless of their medical condition their underlying condition so when facebook took down her video she tweeted this she said hello facebook put back my profile page and videos or your computers will start crashing till you do <laughs> my father and my god my mother in case you're watching i'm the only one that will tell you the truth ma. what was that like seriously what was that their computers will crash evil. and then she said that you are not bigger than god <laughs> what has this to do with god <laughs> and then she said i promise you if my page is not back up facebook will be down in jesus name okay okay that's it that's <laughs> okay that's it um let me bring myself back <laughs> i'm so sorry i'm not making fun of this woman i swear <laughs> i'm not oh um, <laughs> it's just what she, what she tweeted okay so let's just take a critical look at that sense. <laughs> that's the <that's> when... <laughs> father <laughs> what does this to do with jesus you know you can come out and say this is your findings with evidence and no one will dispute your experience with treating your patient especially when you provide the evidence but i don't know why you have to bring jesus into this matter you want jesus to crash facebook hey <laughs> the devil is a liar <laughs> Jesus feels about this like for you I, I'm just Jesus like maybe you want okay he's not saying anything um <laughs> but I just don't know how he feels about you bringing him into crashing Facebook I didn't know this is what we needed for Facebook to crash um but thank you I really appreciate your boldness after Jesus crashes Facebook <laughs> maybe Jesus will buy us on Twitter because guess what Twitter also took down her video I and mean, if someone had tweeted at her that she write books about trusting God I prefer my doctors to write books about trusting science so this person is indirectly challenging her face mixing it with science and just the way she responded to the person i was shocked she said your chip is definitely malfunctioning i was like uh oh and then she said who told you you can't trust god and science what are you smoking okay so i mean at that point i was just like i don't know if this is how jesus would like to be represented is this about making a statement or if you want to witness to somebody i don't know if this person after seeing her tweet i don't know if this person would want to be a christian <laughs> i don't know how effective her answer was to this person also she mentioned that wearing a mask is not necessary although she also said in the same video that she wore masks when treating people with covid19 but i don't know if she should have said that wearing masks is not necessary when there has been several experiments to prove that this reduces the spread of the virus personally i think that's a careless statement and you know people they dug up pictures of her preaching with mask on also videos of her where she was constantly wearing mask so telling people that it's not necessary as a medical doctor i think that is confusing a lot of people and i guess that the one that confused me the most is after her video went viral and trump retweeted it before it was deleted she then tweeted this. she said mr president i'm in town and available i would love to meet with you <laughs> yes she's available trump i don't know how trump missed that tweet this woman is available <laughs> Oh, for you, Sophoro. So she's telling Trump that she's in town. <laughs> and she's available. She's not just in town. She's not busy. Like, she's available. And for some reason, Trump is yet to react to this. This woman wants to meet with Trump. So at that point, 
I was like, okay, so is this about meeting Trump? Because, you know, I was starting to get confused. I don't know if this was about helping people or meeting Trump. Although, you know, the American frontline doctors that she aligned herself with, those people that were with her, tried to open their website, by the way, their website is down. Although the website was just constructed like two weeks ago, so it's still a very new uh, website, so maybe they are still working on it. Anyway, so these people, they are all known as Trump supporters, which makes me wonder if this has anything to do with politics. You know, it doesn't even matter whether you are for Trump or not. I'm just wondering, is this about politics? Because one of them is the co-founder of the Tea Party Patriots Foundation. That is the organization that wants low tax and they're also against government sponsored universal health care. And also the same person is an alternate delegate to the Republican National Committee Convention. And she recently met with Trump at the beginning of this month, uh, July 7th. You can see the video online. So seeing this tweet made me wonder if Auntie Stella is trying to help people or she's trying to meet Oga Trump and then I saw that she started a GoFundMe and I was like now we're doing fundraising they said it in case she gets sued so I was like okay so anyway let's not even talk about that however I think you should know that her tone changed a bit by the end of the next day and I think that this is what she was actually trying to communicate that the medication worked for her patient although I still think that she should back that up with evidence and that she wants more people to have access to this hydroxychloroquine. President Trump, if you can help this nation, do an executive action to make hydroxychloroquine over the counter. That will unchain the hands of doctors. That will stop the pharma. Because right now, even we doctors, when we prescribe it, pharmacists block it. See, now she's asking the president to make it easy to prescribe the medication. I prefer this tone. I wish this was the tone the first time. I feel bad though because by that time, people were already digging into her spiritual claims, all the messages. I think she came from MFM background. So apparently she once said that having sex with demons is the cause of a cyst. Um, so no comment about that. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying, guys. You guys are the ones making me laugh. I'm trying not to laugh. I mean, she must have a reason to, to think, to think that demons. But if you are, if you ever had a cyst, let me know about the dream that you had before, <laughs> before the, before the cyst. Maybe you just need deliverance. I'm trying so hard not to laugh, but I can hear you guys laughing from the other end. <laughs> From the other end of the screen, that is why I'm laughing. Don't, I, I have to stay professional. I seem to be influenced by you guys. Please stop laughing. Oh, by the way, this is how she responded to the media when they started talking about her deliverance ministry. Wow, CNN, MSNBC are doing free commercials on our deliverance ministry. Firepower is mainstream. Thank you, CNN. And let me know when y'all need some of them demons cast out of you. I was like, wow. Um... Okay, <laughs> now she's saying that they are demon possessed and that they need deliverance. I don't know if this is how she should come up. Like personally, I, I feel like she could communicate in a different way. But you know, in any case, I just want to know what you guys think about this whole drama. Let me know in the comment section. Anyway, once again, in case Dr. Stella is watching me, I don't have anything against you saying that hydroxychloroquine works. I just think that your presentation, you know, presentation matters a lot. Let me know what you guys think. You guys not doing much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. So, I heard that Ghanaians have enjoyed three months of free electricity and water. Ah! Baba! 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 This life is not fair. On top of that, their government has decided to give them three more months of free water and free electricity. Ah! Ghanaians, move closer, please. Just ah! Charlie! 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 When the rest of us are complaining about our government in Africa, Ghanaians, you are not allowed to say, Pim! You, in fact, just do this. You are ah! No, 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 you cannot complain at all. At all. Some of them are even saying, well, it's not completely free. We pay half. I said, ha, imagine, they are still talking. They are, st they are still talking. Go to Niger. People don't have light. They are making payments, but there's no light. They are still making payments. You have light and you are not even making payment or you are not making full payment. I don't know, but you are still complaining. The devil is saying, yeah, you guys need to be more grateful. How <laughs> Ghanaians. Um, having said that, some Ghanaians are saying that the government is doing this just because of the coming election. So I don't know. Let me know what you think about that. But you know, even if it is because of the coming election, at least you are getting something, you know? <laughs> but if you're not from Ghana, let me know what you are getting from your government during this time of COVID-19. Are you getting free water or free electricity like Ghana? Or are you getting direct deposits? Are you getting money from your government or not? Let me know in the comment section. Ghanaians, I'm watching you on Plasma TV. You guys know I don't know much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. 
Once again, Nigerian government had a ceremony for 601 former Boko Haram members. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they call them repentant terrorists. This is not the first time, by the way, that they're doing this. You know, thousands of them have graduated like that. And of course, they also gave them 20,000 naira. That is like $51. Meanwhile, we continue to see videos of our soldiers starving in Nigeria. Like, literally, literally. <laughs> How is it that we are paying terrorists, but our soldiers are starving? How is that? Does that make any sense to you? Look at the peripheral level of this equation inside the photosynthesis. It makes absolutely no sense. Mr. President, in case you are watching, you're not going to let me watch you on Plasma TV. Ah, hey, that. Sorry, we have a president that cares more about terrorists than about soldiers that are being killed by these terrorists, and he doesn't even care about their family members. A lot of women have lost their husband because of Boko Haram, and... The government doesn't even remember them. In fact, we don't give our internally displaced people, the IDPs, we don't give them the ceremony or the money that we give the terrorists to Benny. And these were the people that were rendered homeless by these terrorists. And not only is Buari encouraging terrorism, I mean, what do you say when people now realize that the only way to get money from this government is if you become a terrorist. I'm not saying people should become a terrorist, but not only is Buari encouraging terrorism, but corruption under him, under Buari, has also grown wings. I mean, we all saw the professor that faked faint in during probing. Now they are telling us that that's the end of the probe. Minister of uh, Niger Delta, um, Akwabu, Minister Akwabu, the man has also been fingered in a lot of shady deals at the Niger Delta Development Commission, NDDC, while he was being probed. You guys have been following this story. He implicated other lawmakers, saying that they also get contracts from the NDDC. Many of you have seen that video, but in case you haven't, this is the moment when the chairman of the committee that was probing him tried to shut him down so that he wouldn't expose all of them. He kept saying, it's okay, it's okay, keep quiet. I just told you that we have record to show that most of the contracts in NDDC are given out to members of National Assembly, but no, you don't know about it. It's so okay. It's okay. okay. It's okay. Okay. The two chairmen, the two chairmen can explain to you. That is why I was no, a member. No, 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 no. I was a member of the NDDC committee. It's okay. It's okay. okay. You see, Nigerians, see your life. Ah, we have suffered. And can you guys believe that um, Akabio denied everything he said in that video? No, he he denied it. He said he never said. <laughs> can you imagine this? This is something. Play it one more time. Most of the contracts in NDDC are given out to members of National Assembly, but no, you don't know about it. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. You see, he denied it. And then later, he mentioned some names, just a few names. But guess what? This is the shocking part. The Senate has exonerated all of those people. They said that they just influence projects. You see? Yeah, they already they know how to cover up for themselves. They know how to protect themselves. But if it's a petitive, did you hear that uh, somebody stole banana in Ocean State and they put the person in prison for one month? Did you hear about that? Okay, so when it is them, they protect themselves. When it is common people, you go to prison for stealing banana. Now, I'm sure you guys must have seen this video, but let me show you one more time. Normally, once you have a contract in NDDC, it is like you have won a lottery. A contract that they will award to you in NDDC for 700 million, you can use 10 or 20 million to do it. Thank you very much. Say it one more time. A contract that they will award to you in NDDC for 700 million, you can use 10 or 20 million to do it. Okay, my people will move closer. Um, all this is happening under Buhari, who claims that his administration is fighting corruption. Which was why I laughed when I saw this. I'm like, really, Mr. President? I don't think Buhari should even be talking at all. Like, when they mention corruption, he should just zip it. Ben. Meanwhile, Oshu Omole continues to treat the people of Edo State as if they are his houseboys and housegirls, trying to be their godfather by fire by force, telling them who to vote for. And in a recent video, you could see Oshu Omole kneeling down for traditional leaders, trying to get their votes. I am sorry, I sold a bad product, but I'm telling you, any of us should have made that mistake. Okay, did he just say he sold them the wrong product? You see, 
they're just like products as far as it's concerned they do this every election time and believe it or not there are people that will still buy their products now the sad thing is a lot of these traditional rulers are also corrupt and they will take money and try to convince their people to vote for somebody that doesn't care about them all i'm saying is there's so much corruption thriving during this time of buhari who claims to be fighting corruption oh by the way mr president in case you're watching yes um since you are the minister of petroleum you made yourself minister of petroleum we're still waiting to hear from you about the money that disappeared at nnpc recently the billions of naira Benny, because i believe you should be questioned by efcc if you are from Edo State, by the way let's hear from you guys is it obaseki or is it iyamo why or why not you guys not know much guess what i'm just keeping it real so how are my south african people doing how you doing how you doing did you guys hear that the president of south africa banned the sale of alcohol my god my god <laughs> the president said that this is to combat the spread of covid 19. apparently they want to make sure that the emergency room is readily available for people with covid 19 not some people that got drunk and got in accident or got drunk and got in fight so they want to make sure that the emergency room is for covid 19 people so that's why they banned the sale of alcohol in South Africa. So how have you guys been coping in South Africa? You know, the brewing companies are not happy about this at all. Interesting thing is, Kenya has also banned the sale of alcohol. <gasps> oh my God! Oh my God! So I'm really interested in knowing though how effective this has been. Has this been effective? Let's hear from you guys. I wonder what will happen if they adopt this in Nigeria. <laughs> And yes, let's hear from you <laughs> because you know the important thing is saving lives. So let's, I mean, let's think about it. The important thing is saving lives. But of course, there are people who argue that this is actually the time that they need alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> you know i pray that you will never find yourself in a place where you need alcohol because that is addiction small 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 eh? <laughs> but again there are some of us that don't drink alcohol at all <laughs> and we're doing okay <laughs> and while some south africans and some kenyans are missing alcohol sudan is finally allowing non-muslims to consume alcohol i mean i don't know if you know but since 1983 sudan has not allowed people to drink alcohol legally of course people are drinking it illegally they said it's against islam and it didn't matter whether you are a muslim or not in sudan in fact they flogged people for selling homemade alcohol in sudan so now they are saying that if you're not a muslim in sudan you can drink alcohol i'm telling you alcohol is a very serious issue <laughs> <laughs> worldwide eh? <laughs> but you know the good news is while we're still on sudan sudan is finally taking a stand against female genital mutilation fgm oh shit an experience that has traumatized a lot of people they're finally saying that it's a crime to cut a girl that is amazing we're really hoping that the government of sudan would uphold this law and actually enforce it but just to see that they're also finally taking a stand against this practice is a win for millions of girls in sudan where about 9 out of 10 women have undergone FGM. So congratulations to the women of Sudan. We're so excited for you. You guys not know much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. So two quick announcements before I leave. First of all, if you're living in America, it doesn't matter whether you're from Africa or not. If you have a business, don't forget to apply for the SBA loan that is being given to small business owners. If you're interested, it's not by fire by force, but if you're interested. Also, there's the PPP loan that you can use to pay your workers in the meantime. Uh, if you're here in America and you have a business and they are willing to actually forgive some of the PPP loans. So take advantage of that. All you need is to, to be either an American citizen or a green card holder with a registered business in America and then you can apply for that also I like to give a huge shout out for an African man in New York who developed an alternative to zoom it's called connectors oh shit make sure that you check it out because it doesn't use as much data as zoom does so if you live in a country where it consumes a lot of your data then this may be a very good alternative to zoom for you it's completely free by the way no credit card requirements no hidden fees and you 
you can have up to 300 people online at the same time how cool is that you can also use your phone or your laptop and you don't have to download anything by the way the most important thing is it uses less data so make sure that you visit connectors.com and make sure that you check it out once again it's free and it was developed by an african so let's support african business so make sure that you check it out oh i forgot if you guys are here to watch the call on netflix in nigeria oh shit a movie by my very own brother you know too well make sure that you watch that movie on netflix we're still waiting for you to get on netflix in america i can't wait seriously oh by the way i'll be on his insta live on saturday 8 p.m nigerian time he's going to interview me i don't know what he will ask i'm still praying that god will help your girl <laughs> join us for that it should be fun lastly who are those people that are yet to subscribe to this channel please let move move let me see them i just ah uncle it's okay auntie i say you refuse to press the subscribe button god is watching you on plasma tv <laughs> All right, y'all, it's been real, and I'm keeping it right up in here. Don't forget to follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And if you're yet to subscribe, please press the subscribe button. It doesn't even take a minute. Until next time, I'm going to see you later. Peace out. Call it all. I'll call you back. What's up, my people? It's your girl. Yes, I send money to Nigeria all the time, both to support my family and to support the foundation. I've tried lots of ways, stores, apps, banks, but they were too expensive and so time consuming. So when I heard about SendWave, I was skeptical at first. Let me be real with you guys. <laughs> it sounded too good to be true and I didn't trust it. But once I tried it, um, uh, there was no going back. They deliver within the minute, as in one shot, pra, pra, you send it and they receive it instantly okay and they're always the cheapest in fact you don't pay any transaction fees you get what i'm saying <laughs> that's amazing and then they have very competitive rates so sometimes you will think that the competitors may look cheaper but with the fees that they are always charging they are more expensive on top of that they are secure all my data is heavily encrypted and they have a dedicated fraud and security team to keep me and my money safe. Ah, you get what I'm saying? You see, that's why I trust SendWave to send my money, whether I'm up in the mountains or whether I'm home relaxing. My people, try SendWave. Hey, your life will never remain the same.